it's not necessarily just RE. Um, and if you wonder what me and Neil are doing, actually, uh, there's a fantastic new app um, called a Periscape. Uh, has anyone heard of Periscape? Um, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm not. Um, is going to be used um, in the classroom um, just yet, um, but it is actually an ability to to, to live broadcast. Um, and I was pretty amazed actually in my uh, opening speech. There were 17 people watching online. Um, I've no idea who they are. Um, <laughs> it's probably my mum, my sister, my dad. Um, and what I just want to share something with you, and it won't even be um, five minutes. Um, is, is just the idea that uh, you may have come across this idea of metacognition, cognitive um, psychology, which um, a number of teachers are starting to embrace now. Actually, we have um, a far better idea of how our brains work. Um, and, you know, there's actually some science behind learning, which is becoming more accessible to teachers. And there's various organisations that are, you know, starting to put some money out there. You might have come across um, the education uh, endowment Foundation and the, the toolkit that they produce, uh, which kind of evaluates different resources that schools can spend their money on. What I just wanted to do was a few really kind of just quick and easy wins um, where we, using some of the knowledge that we have about the, the brain and how it works and how um, we can use some of that in RE. Okay, um, the thing about I think teaching is we can spend hours producing these all singing, all dancing lessons and we can come away with this great sense of pride of that lesson absolutely nailed it. Um, the end of the day, we obviously want to be teaching uh, the, the best of what there is, but also we want our students to remember it. And we could have these brilliant all singing, all dancing lessons every single week, but then it comes to the exam and we're a little bit confused why our students have got really low marks. Um, one of the most important things uh, that I've learned recently is about this forgetting curve. Um, that actually, um, if we, and this is the big if, I think, if we are sure that our students remember 100% of our lesson, and I don't know if I'd ever be brave enough to say my students come away with 100%, that then starts to decrease over time, okay? Um, if our students actually only picked up 80% of our lesson, they're obviously starting at a lower point, okay? Um, and this, this curve has a, a huge, huge effect. Um, what we can do, though, is actually try to overcome it. We can fight the curve. We can fight our brain's natural tendency to forget things, okay? And the way in which we do that, the optimum time, actually, is to take a bit of material um, and revisit it after 10 minutes, then again after 24 hours, a week, and a month. And actually, what you do each time is you're combating the curve and delaying its decrease. All very good in theory. We've got loads of content, we've got loads on our syllabus, we've got loads to get through. So actually, um, I've had this big kind of thing, like I love this theory, this theory is brilliant, um, I could talk about it all day long, that's not very good for my classroom. Um, it's not of much use to me. So some of the things I've been thinking about um, is the homeworks that I'm setting. Um, sometimes I would be deliberately setting homeworks that maybe would push the students on. I've given them something, let's try and give them more. And then I want to see if they remember what I did last lesson and they don't because I've tried to keep pushing them on. So I've set far more homeworks this year that involve reviewing, organising, uh, spending time comprehending um, and you know, reorganising their notes from class. Um, and actually, um, the students have found it useful and I, 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 have, I haven't done a piece of research on it yet, but the students, anecdotally, um, do seem to be remembering the stuff a little bit more because I'm reducing um, the content. Um, next lesson, again, when I was doing my PGC, um, it was uh, uh, certainly about kind of making your, your, your starter the most you know, interactive, hook, engaging. Sometimes there's absolutely a place for that. If you have got um, your bottom set, year 10, uh, last time on Friday afternoon, you need some way of getting them on side. But actually, um, I've started doing a lot of recapping in my starter, where maybe three or four questions from last lesson that are just making them think. Um, these tests for me are all low stakes. I've actually stopped taking in the marks for them. Actually, my students aren't worried about that test at the start of the lesson because actually um, I am not on their back about it. And actually, it sounds bizarre, but they then actually end up not seeing the test um, as, as high pressure, high stakes. Um, again, um, doing kind of at the end of unit, making sure um, that actually some of these other things are, are low stakes, but you're then actually revisiting things two or three times, okay? Um, and, you know, there's, there's various ideas which, you know, you probably need to read a little bit more about. 
um, such as distributed and interleaved practice. And that's when we're actually um, breaking things up into different chunks, making sure we revisit them. Um, and I'll mention a little bit about that, how I'm doing that at GCC in a second. Um, this is breaking on me. Right, key stage three. And one of the ideas I'm reading about at the, the minute is this idea of knowledge organisers. Um, there's a lot of discussion about it, but actually I sometimes think I do it the wrong way around. At GCC I always make them do their keywords at the end, but maybe actually I should give them the keywords at the beginning and say, actually, this is what we're heading for. Should I give them the list of names at the beginning and say, actually, this is the, the body of knowledge that I want you to know and understand and be able to evaluate at the end of this unit, and I give them that at the start. Um, that's something I'm thinking of, of introducing for, for, for next year. Um, again, uh, changing uh, the homeworks and these low, t low stakes quizzing and testing. Um, I've started reintroducing, I used to do it years ago, but stopped doing it. I've started reintroducing kind of um, keyword quizzes and definition quizzes because actually they are the basics um, and they, these are the tools they need in order to access the, 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 the other stuff. Um, at GCSE, this is, uh, I do at Excel, um, there's eight units in total. Um, what I'm starting to do uh, from the start of next academic year, I've been working on it kind of uh, up until now. Um, we're going to do a pattern like this. We're going to study the unit and then do a unit test. We're going to study the unit and then we're actually going to test on both the units. We're going to study the third unit. We're going to have an end of unit test plus another test that mixes together the information from those two um, and so on. And so we're going to actually um, have for two tests at the end of each unit rather than one. The second test is going to be a bit of a mixture. They don't know what's going to be on it, but it's going to require them to know everything. And I'm actually going to probably get them to pin up that because otherwise I'm doubling my working load. <laughs> and if you're anything like me, you've got enough already. Um, and again, kind of introducing, um, you know, at GCC, sending the new one, there's going to be more scripture. Um, I know that I don't give them kind of enough regular testing to make sure they know that scripture. Um, again, kind of just uh, my year my 12s, my year 12s this year, I had quite a weak group of year 12s. Um, they, they really kind of struggled. Um, and one of the things I started introducing was we had to test every single lesson. Very, very short, but they had three questions at the start of every single lesson. Um, they actually loved it. Um, but there was actually some really difficult questions um, that they had to do at the start of every lesson. Sometimes it was based on some reading I gave them, um, but it really did... Um, I did it for the third topic we did, and their timed essay results were actually significantly better. Again, anecdotal, it's not, don't quote me in any of your research papers, um, but it works for me. Um, so there's, there's lots of different things to think about, you know, it's not as simple as that. We need to factor in difficulty, meaningfulness, how things were learned, frequency of study, other physiological factors, were they asleep in your lesson, were they stressed. Um, it's really not that simple, um, it's always more complicated than that. Um, but ultimately, they're just a few ideas, maybe some ideas for you to take away, because these are the, the kind of things that, you know, some really good um, psychologists are writing about. That these are how brains work, should we not be trying to think how our teaching can adapt to them. Thank you very much.